Good morning, Boston. Wow, what a wonderful turnout. I can't begin to tell you how proud and honored I am to be with, here with you today, the day before the federal and state bureaucracies reach their little hands into our pockets to extract massive amounts of money to feed the abusive, the addictive, and the non-responsive spending whims of progressives like Pelosi and Reid. And of course, our spender-in-chief, President Obama. I am proud and I am honored to be here with you this morning to celebrate the rights of all Americans. To free speech, the right to worship as we wish, the right to protest the arrogant abuses of our government, and of course the right to campaign for the restoration of our republic. In my 62 years see all the cameras on God's beautiful earth, I have never, I repeat, I have never seen a government so unresponsive to the American people. We did not and we do not want Obamacare. We want a solution, a simple solution to the ills of our medical system that doesn't add trillions to our deficit. We did not and we do not want massive government energy programs like cap and trade. The American people want clean air. Yeah. We want alternative sources of energy. Yeah. But we do not want those things at the extreme costs of a federal mandate while 17% of the American people are unemployed. President, how's that laser attention to getting jobs for the millions and millions of unemployed Americans working out? And how's that $800 billion program working out to get more jobs for the American people? From what I hear, not very well. The American people did not and do not want leadership more often than not as a total disregard for the campaign promises and pledges made during the election. Mr. Obama, where was the transparency? Where is the transparency? None. In your there is it. Mr. Obama, what happened to no lobbyists in the White House? Mr. Obama, <laughs> what about if you make under $250,000 a year, not one dime, not one single dime, more in taxes? Liar! <laughs> what happened to that promise, Mr. Obama? And Mr. Obama, what happened to reaching across the aisle? What happened to no more partisan politics? It was like a People did yeah, not and do not want an immigration policy that gives a free pass to 13 to 15 million illegal immigrants in this country. Mr. Obama, we want the southern border shut down so tight. Mr. Obama, let's do what's right for the American people. He's going to do it someday. Never. He's Mr. not going to do that. We do Never. not want, and we did not want, a government that dictates, directs, and oversees the distribution of wealth. We do not, and did not want, a nanny state. I assure you, Mr. President, I am, we all are, much, much more capable of making our own decisions about how to run our lives, about how to spend our money, and about how to raise our money. My great-grandfather wrote The Stars and Stripes Forever in 1896. 
Reagan signed the law that made the Stars and Stripes Forever the National March of the United States of America. was also director of the Marine Corps Band, often referred to as the President's Own. Now, the President's Own plays at for the pleasure and at the whim of the President of the United States. As many of you know, my great-grandfather also wrote the Washington Post March, named after the Lane Street Media that we all love in Washington, D.C. So I was thinking, perhaps instead of the President's Own playing the Stars and Stripes forever, it might be a bit more fitting if they simply played the Washington Post March for the President. Being related to John Philip Sousa is a high honor indeed. And with that honor comes a few stories, and I'll share one quick one with you. As many of you know, there are a number of bridges connecting Virginia to Washington, D.C., and one of those bridges is the John Philip Sousa Bridge. A number of years ago, I had the honor of being the Grand Marshal at the Great American Brass Band Festival at Danville, Danbury, uh, Kentucky. And one afternoon, they had asked me to sit at, sit at a, a table and, and sign some autographs. And out of the corner of my eye while I was doing this, I saw a lady approaching me at a rapid pace. And I'm signing autographs. And there's about 15 people in line, and this lady keeps coming and coming. And eventually, she reaches the table, pushes ahead of everyone in front of her, and says, You John Philip Sousa? I went, well, I'm the fourth. She goes, you got a bridge in Washington, D.C.? I said, well, it's not exactly my bridge. She said, well, the traffic on that bridge is terrible, and you got to fix it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure and an honor for me to share a few minutes with you this morning. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for your dedication to restoration of smaller government, lower taxes, and a more responsive government. I look forward to taking a victory lap with you in November. And three years from now, playing the Stars and Stripes forever and not the Washington Post March for the President of the United States. God bless you and God bless America. It is my honor and privilege to introduce Bay Area recording artist Diana Negi. Give her a big hand, folks. Thank you.
country, and that's what we're all about, is the love for our country, of which we've been so richly blessed. If you'll all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Massachusetts for a change. They're sick and tired of the elitist, the elite media. By the way, I don't know if you noticed the papers this morning, but the Globe will read about this tomorrow in the Herald. This is a great day, and I am so glad that so many of you turned out because we've been told they aren't going to show up, but you proved them wrong. Yeah. And for the benefit of those cameras back there, the Constitution... 
Constitution set up this country as the only cut country in the history of mankind, premised on the notion that the only reason for government to exist is for the protection and the advancement of each individual's human and civil rights. Not to facilitate the thieves under the Golden Dome, not to facilitate the Congress. They work for us and they dance to our tune. Yeah. 
little bit. Did you see that? Introduce the next book, and it's a true story. We have lots of international press traveling with us. One is a reporter from Beijing who told us that in Beijing, I swear to God, this is true, he said they have a saying there. There are two world capitals of communism. One is Pyongyang, North Korea, the other, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Well, we'll reclaim Cambridge for America, too. We, as we travel the country, folks, we, we make it a point uh, as we travel to recognize those men and women who wear the uniform of this country. A couple, a couple of years back, many of us have actually been over to see, our, some of us are going back in June to Iraq. Um, we recognize that because we're here doing the job on the home front of maintaining liberty and, and enforcing the Constitution. But there are men and women who are literally dying for the same thing in the field of battle. I know, I've been there, I've seen it. Um, we have, as a member of the Tea Party Express family, a gold star mom. You know what a gold star mom is, right? Yeah. You'll find out in a minute if you don't know. Um, this lady's son, also named Mark, was the first United States Navy SEAL killed in Iraq. Now, I don't know what I would do. I have, I've, never, I've never had this horror. What I would do if I looked out the front window and saw an officer and a chaplain come walking up my front stairs. Debbie Lee made the decision that moment to make sure that her son's sacrifice would be remembered and that people understood exactly why he sacrificed, why he made it. He didn't want to die, but he died for us. She traveled, please. She traveled the country reminding Americans of the, the price that has been paid for what people are trying to take away from us and what we're rising up to reclaim. Ladies and gentlemen, Tea Party Express family member, Gold Star Mother, our friend, Miss Debbie Lee.
proud of that young man. I miss him very deeply, but so proud of him. Yeah. Mark stood about six foot tall. He weighed about 200 pounds. And in addition to his own weight, he carried the big gun, the M60. So he carried anywhere from 150 to 180 pounds in addition to his own weight. The day that he willingly gave up his life, August 2nd, it was 115 to 120 degrees out there. They had been in an intense firefight for he evaluated the situation and said, we got to get Ryan out of here immediately or there's no chance for survival. So not once, but a second time. Mark made that choice to stand up into the direct line of fire. They all successfully got down off that roof. And I'm proud to tell you today, in Ramadi, Iraq, there is a base named Camp Mark Lee after this young man. I went over to thank the troops for what they're doing and was embedded with the 1st and 4th Cav in Baghdad. And when the SEALs heard that Mama Lee was in country, they sent a helicopter for me and they took me to that base. I got to walk where he walked and see where he slept. And I brought back some of the soil where that young man willingly gave his life. But as the chief came into the base, he said, we just found 30 of the insurgents that just attacked us. Are you guys up to going back out? Now, if it would have been me, I'd have said, there's a Marine base just on the other side of our camp. Why don't you find some Marines that haven't been out in the last 24 hours that are fresh and ready to go? But that's not the character of the Navy SEALs, and that wasn't the character of my son. He looked at his chief, and he looked him in the eye, and he said, Roger that, let's go get him. So they went... several houses and went in the last house that Mark would be in that day. And they started up the steps. And as they went up the steps, they took fire through a window. And for the last and final time, Mark made the choice to turn into the line of fire to defend his buddies. But he didn't do that just for his buddies. He did that for each and every one of you that are here today. He did that for me. He did that for this country that he so loved. that all of these men and women who raised their hand today, of my son, of each and every one who sacrificed and made that ultimate sacrifice, we can't forget what they fought, what they bled, and what they died for. I know it's nothing new to you, but I'm here to inform you today, just like the chief came in and said there were insurgents, we've got political insurgents in Washington, D.C. <laughs> from each one of you. Will you have the same response my son did? Will you say, Roger that, let's go get him! I founded America's Mighty Warriors in response to my son's last letter home because it's not just about Mark. It's about each and every one who have given and sacrificed so much. And as long as I have a breath, I will use my voice to be out there honoring troops, their families, and the families of the fallen. I have someone very special here with me today, and that's one of Mark's teammates, and I would like to call Kevin Lace, one of my adopted boys, up, please. Navy SEAL that's been with us. Uh, Benjamin Smith, can I call you up too, please? We would like to continue our tribute to all of you who have served and given so very much. And to do that, I would like to call Ron and Kay Rivoli up, who've written an amazing song called Freedom is Not Free. I think it's 
just a great and poignant message. It says simply, if you can read this bumper sticker, thank a teacher. If you can read it in English, thank a veteran. to remember our police and our firefighters who serve in our local communities who also lay their lives on the line on a daily basis. You know, in June of 1945, General George Patton came home to this great city, and it was a great day of celebration to have him here. He once said, it is both foolish and wrong to mourn good men who have died. Instead, we should thank God that they lived. And I thank God for our fallen heroes. I saw a flag pass by one day and it fluttered in the breeze. A young Marine saluted it, and then he stood at ease. I watched him in the crowd that day, so young, so tall, so proud, with hair cut square and eyes alert. He'd stand out in any crowd. I thought of all the men like him who had fallen through the years, of how many had died on foreign soil, how many mother's tears. How many pilots' planes shot down? How many died at sea? How many foxholes were soldiers' graves? For freedom is not free. I heard the sound of taps one night when everything was still. And as the bugler played it, I felt a sudden chill. I wondered just how many times those taps had meant amen as a flag had draped the coffin of a father, brother, friend. I thought of all the children, all the mothers and the wives, all the husbands, sons, and daughters with interrupted lives. Then I thought about a graveyard at the bottom of the sea and of an unmarked grave in Arlington, for freedom is not free.
to my uncle, to Mark Allen Lee, to all who have sacrificed for this country. My uncle was one of the last planes shot down in World War II. He had flown his last mission, was on his way home, when he came across the USS Independence and they were short a torpedo bomber. He was a gunner in a torpedo bomber. He volunteered for one last mission, of which he never returned. The day the war was declared over was the day my grandparents received the news, so as there was laughter and dancing and celebration in the streets, the war was over. They received the news their son wasn't coming home. He was MIA. A couple years later, when my father served, he went to Mizero Harbor, where that plane had gone down, to search for his brother to see if he was still alive. He came across an elder in the village that remembered that day vividly. It was the only plane that had gone down in that harbor. There he took my father out in a little fishing boat. There he stood and prayed upon the grave of his brother at the bottom of the sea, the exact spot where his brother had gone down. Michael Nagy was shot down twice, the second which he gave and paid the ultimate price. The song goes out to him, to Mark Allen Lee, to all you have sacrificed and who continue to sacrifice for our freedom. It's because of you that we are here today celebrating this beautiful freedom and it's for you that we continue to fight for our freedom. Yeah. Where freedom flies. Yeah.
Virginia. me to sing for the commissioning of the new USS Independence in honor of my uncle in Mobile, Alabama, to pass the church from one generation to the next. It was one of the greatest days and privileges of my life. Thank you so much. God bless you. I am Lloyd Marcus, America! across the country and I have lost my voice. Where's Jimmy? But I'm going to sing my song anyway, despite the fact that I have no voice. Why? Because I'm an American! Give me some music. Give me some music.
liberal who needs to spend more time with my family. The Tea Party rolls into Michigan. What happens? Backstagging Bart Stupak decides. I need to spend more time with my family. You guys keep this up. Every loony Obamacare liberal will be spending all their time with their family. That's my mom. My mom is here from Columbia, South Carolina. She came to a tea party a year ago. She's back today. Travel from Columbia, South Carolina to be here with you because she's sick of the name. I had to speak out because I'm tired of the name calling. You've been called everything. You've been called hate mongers, uh, swastika brandishers, and brown shirts, and that's just by members of Congress. And I'm not kidding. Here's my deal with the loot with the folks in the media. MSNBC has my deal. If you'll ignore the one ranting maniac kook you find on the edge of the crowd somewhere, we promise to ignore Keith Oberman. How about that? Is that a deal? <laughs> but, 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 wait, wait, wait. In the spirits of the mainstream media, you know, we're a bunch of evil, hate mongering name callers. I am here to call names. I am here. I'm going to call all of you names. You know what the name is for you? Chumps. You're suckers. Let me tell you why. Every day you get up in the morning and you roll out of bed way too early and you reach that coffee because you think it's your job to pay your bills. <laughs> then you drag your snotty kids out of bed, I got four of them, and you put them in clothes and you tell them how to act because you think it's your job to raise your kids. And then you get in the car, you drive down the mass pipe, we get to pay higher tolls, thank you, Governor Patrick, get to pay gas taxes because you think it's your job to, you know, do your part, to pay your share. You think it's your job to take care of you and your family. Then you go to work and you try to find a way to be smarter and more efficient and create more wealth because you think it's your job to create wealth and be productive. And then you finally come home after your second job and you sit down in front of the TV and you're clicking on, there's the news. Politicians say, you're not doing enough. Give more money. Be patriotic. You get beaten down, smacked down, called names. And then, so what do you do? You finally, oh my gosh, I know, calm down media, you get mad. You think, hey, Someone's got to pay that $3 trillion. Hey, wait a minute. Somebody's got to pay off this debt. Hey, so then you take time off work, hire a babysitter for your kids, get someone to cover your job so you can come down here so they can insult you and call you haters because you're paying attention. You're And you know what? This country was built on chumps and suckers like you, and I'm proud. to the parts department would not let us yeah. do that. I'm sorry. Direct from Alaska. Yeah. A great woman, a strong leader, and a strong voice that represents all of us from coast to coast, from Searchlight, Nevada, to Boston, Massachusetts. Got a three. Governor Sarah, Sarah
know, but now we do know. That's the what point. Now we do that? know. We know what the problem is, and now we're going to fix the problem. <laughs> and we told them that we don't like their plans. We told them in polls and protests and special elections. And instead of listening to us, though, what do they do? They keep lecturing. They keep apologizing for us, speaking down to us. conservative leaders. 
leaders who know that we can't spend our way out of these problems. And these are leaders who aren't afraid to make tough choices. And many of them, too, and I think many of them would admit, they, too, over this past year, year and a half, they've learned their lessons. These good folks believe what Reagan believed when he said, there are no easy answers, but there are simple answers. We just need the moral courage to do what we know. Oh. 
politicians. It is her people and the values, the principles that you hold so dear.
under a separate system. It's arrogant when they cut deals behind closed doors, especially after bragging that they bring in the C-SPAN cameras. It's arrogant when they forget that they work for us and not the other way around. It's arrogant when they think that they know better than we do what's best for our families and for our country. It's arrogant when they use military aircraft so that they can fly around like royalty, but then show no respect for the men and women who serve in the military and sacrifice every day. It's arrogant when they claim that they won't raise the taxes on anyone earning less than a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year. And I want you to think truthfully in your hearts exactly what it is that America is. It's more than a country. It's more than an idea. It's more than us as people. You think back to the Founding Fathers and you understand that they wanted freedom and liberty and independence and all of these other things and they looked around and they said, where are the examples? And they took a piece from here and it's a piece from there and they started crafting something. We should think of those Founding Fathers as, as craftsmen. We should think of them as jewelers. They took pieces of, of metal not gold or silver, but, but pieces of metal that frankly were not precious. And they put them together with stones that weren't diamonds or rubies or emeralds, but common stones you found all over the street and they put them together and they made something beautiful. They made a beautiful piece of jewelry. And each and every person who's been blessed to be an American has responsibility for taking care of that piece of jewelry. And along the way, like any piece of jewelry, you've, you've needed to repair something here, you've needed to tinker something, tinker with something there and make it look good again. But it's always been a beautiful present. It's always been an obligation that we have to take care of it. Because you know as well as I do, it's not ours. We're just taking care of it. I see here so many heroes, veterans, police officers, firefighters, paramedics who every single day stand up and say, if necessary, I will sacrifice for you. The question becomes, what will you sacrifice and what is your obligation? Look, I will tell you standing here today that for many of us, the year 2001 was a transformative year. Because something happened on September the 11th, 2001 that woke up so many people across this country. But if you don't mind, I want to share with you something that happened on July the 25th of 2001 and something that happened on July the 29th of 2001. On July the 25th, 2001, my dad passed away. Four days later, on July 29th, my oldest son was born. I went through emotions I wouldn't wish on anybody, but I'm going to tell you something. What became clear to me in those four days was that I had an obligation passed from my father to me and I have to pass it on to him. You and I are not necessarily heroes or patriots, we are custodians. We are caretakers of that piece of jewelry. We need to polish it, we need to protect it, and we need to stand up to the first administration that seems hell-bent not to fix it, but to take a sledgehammer and smash it. I only want to remind you 
of our obligation. It is our collective obligation. Every one of us standing here as a mother or a father has an obligation to our children to be on guard, to protect and defend this nation, this idea, this continuing experiment. And my hope is that you remember the example, that it is a piece of jewelry. It is invaluable at this point. There are people who want to steal it. There are people who want to break it. But it is our obligation to safeguard it, polish it, and hand it on to our children so that they may hand it on to their children so that this grand experiment continues. Thank you so much for being in my home. Welcome
she said, well, I'll tell you. In kindergarten, they tell the little kids to bow their heads and close their eyes and pray to God and ask him for candy. When they open their eyes, there's no candy there. And then they tell the little kids to bow their heads and close their eyes and pray to Castro and ask him for candy. And when they open their eyes, there's candy there. Quote unquote. Well, uh, he taught a course in Saul Alinsky. He was friends with William. 
away and I awake to a happier day when my ukulele does not play this song of dire distress and dismay. This song called There's a Communist Living in the White House. Everybody, there's a communist living in the White House. Everybody, there's a communist which are more pleasant to hear than mine. This song was inspired by Obamacare, and it's called I Hope I Don't Get Sick. Do you know that one of the things in the oh, health care plan is that if you have cancer, the government decides whether you get chemotherapy or not? It doesn't sound very American to me.
thousand of you, even though some of the media said there were 200 of us. And this journey that so many of us have been through over this last year, where we have gone out and informed ourselves, empowered ourselves, helped elect number 41. And are moving forward even now. We're out here today enjoying the, the solidarity of being with people who believe what we believe, who think about government the way we think about it. And, and, and I love that. I, I love this. I love the weather. I love that we're all together. But we also need to be thinking about what we're going to do tomorrow. There's some great candidates here today. There are candidates all over Massachusetts in untold numbers running as independents and Republicans, as conservative, fiscally responsible, limited government, free speech, free markets, personal responsibility, liberty candidates. And we all need to get on the ground and work for them. So either come and find us. We have a hundred or more volunteers in the crowd. We will find a Tea Party organization in your zip code or we will help you start one. And we are going to flip Beacon Hill. We're going to flip Congress.
speech fails, and we are getting down, getting down with the issues, shouting them out loud, we the people, we are speaking, they can't even hear us now, we're the Tea Party Express, and we're rocking through your town, we're the Tea Party Express, and we are getting down, getting down with the issues, shouting them out loud. Now, I'm not a politician. I am a conservative Christian. 
supports us to fuel these buses because we refuse to take money from the government. What they give, they can take away. We just need them to build the roads and protect our borders and we can make our own living. And furthermore, if I choose to share the money with someone, I'll share it with who I choose to share it with. Diana Nagy, she has a beautiful CD. Lloyd Marcus, the Rivalies, let's give it up again. You know, Lloyd is not only a great singer, where's Lloyd at? He's not only a great singer, but he's also an awesome writer. This book caused his family to admit he was right. Confessions of a Black Conservative, How the Left Has Shattered the Dreams of Dr. Martin Luther King. Awesome book. Debbie Lee, Battlefield and Blessings. Thank you so much for you all support as we continue to take this tour throughout the country. And also Mark Williams, Taking Back America, one tea party at a time. Now, I have a quick question. How many people this is your first time at a tea party? Wow, that is awesome. Well, let me tell you, people want to know how to get involved and what to do. This book is called Walk With Me, a Patriot's Guide from the Boston Tea Party to Today's Tea Party Revolution. It'll really touch your heart. How many warriors do we have out there? Well, you know, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Some of y'all understand that. I wrote a book called Warriors Arise. Thank you so much for you all listening to that brief commercial break. Now, I want to share a message with you. How many of you all are tired of the rhetoric? You know, for too long, we've been passive in America. God has blessed us with our successes. We've enjoyed opportunity to buy and to sell. We've taken vacations. We have been so blessed and it's caused us to slip into passivity. And while we slept, the enemy crept in. It's one thing I'm thankful for about Obama. And that is he's a very loud burglar because he's walking up the house. Let me say something to you. It is not about the color of Obama. No. It's not even about your color. No. It's about liberty and freedom. Right. We made a big mistake when we voted for a president because of pigmentation. Pigmentation will do nothing for you. It's about the principles. When our founding fathers put up their fortunes and their lives to fight for the liberty and freedom, they could care less who they were fighting against because they were fighting against an ideology. And we have to fight against that same ideology today. I did a CD series for you. Answers beyond the rhetoric, because people want to be told the simple, cotton-picking truth. And I believe we can handle the truth. I believe we can, but we have to be willing to also dish the truth, tell the truth, and the American people deserve that. We want to thank you all from the bottom of our hearts for being here today. We want to thank you for your, your, your commitment to the liberties and freedoms that are yours, that are your children, and that are your children's children. Dare we look in the face of our grandchildren and say, I did not step forward and be counted. Now is the time for you to be counted. Will you be counted? We pray that you enjoy these products that we have for you. We only ask five bucks for that because I want to get the message out. Now, I want to say something to you, and when I say this, remember it comes responsibility. When I say God bless you, know this. God blesses those who will rise up, hearken, and then obey. Are you willing to do that? Then God bless you. And God bless Boston, Massachusetts, you. a young man that hails from Waco, Texas, USA. He's going to share with you what the Constitution has done for his life, how it's changed him. Would you welcome with me, politics? Hello, Boston. It thrills me. It's almost like a second dream come true to be in the place where it all started, the Tea Party movement, where it happened at first. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. Because last summer, 
In 2009, a group of people just like you gathered together in downtown Waco to protest cap and trade. I've never seen a real protest before. I live in one of the lowest income communities in Waco. I'm a youth minister. I work with students. And when I walked up to those protesters, they call themselves the Waco Tea Party Watchdogs. They didn't turn me away because I'm of Mexican descent. They didn't turn me away because I had my facts wrong. They welcomed me in and they encouraged me. And because my heart was open, I learned. And since that time, I've read the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of the United States of America, many of the founding era documents that went back and forth from our founders. And I've learned and learned and learned. And I see today how big government programs are destroying my community and destroying the people in my community. So I have a simple message for the mainstream mainstream and anyone else who wants to marginalize the Tea Party movement. Marginalize this. They call us extreme. You didn't expect that, did you? They call us yeah. angry mobs. It's a rapper with his pants pulled up. <laughs> Let me help you understand. What's a Tea Party? Fiscally responsible, that's a tea party. For most free market, yes, that's a tea party. Liberty of government's the only solution. Only foundation should be our constitution. Fiscally responsible, that's a tea party. For most free market, yes, that's a tea party. Liberty of government's the only solution. Our only foundation should be that's a Tea Party movement once again involved in. Not a race thing, though you hear that often. Lies, don't believe the liberal spin. Let us break it down and tell you where it all begins. See, in 1776, a declaration written by the founders that formed a new nation. But wait, some didn't like the cause. Through the years, they've been working to destroy us all. There it was, 2009, dangerous times. Socialist agendas they wanted to sign. So the people combined said, let's have a Tea Party. Your neighbors and your friends, a mob. Hardly what happened is a sleeping giant told to wake up. Have you ever heard two million people shouting enough? The walls of the Congress and Senate are shaking. This is the result when you awake a free nation. Liberty of government's the only solution. Our only foundation should be our constitution. Fiscally responsible, that's a tea party. Promotes free market, yes, that's a tea party. Liberty of government's the only solution. Our only foundation should be our constitution. So the WTP chose to hit the streets. That's the Waco Tea Party. They activated me, grassroots. That means from the bottom to the top. Hitting the communities and place should never stop. We point out the waste. Don't let us see you lie. We're turning out the boats that your money can't buy. We turned in the states into a campaign revolution. Every mile marker seen the Constitution. Tea Party's here. That's Tea Party's there. The Tea Party movement got them running scared. They know that their lies cannot penetrate the truth. 2010, we gon' prove it at the booth. We don't care if you're a team. We don't care if you're an all. If your folks don't stand for the strikes and the stars, let liberty prevail to this. I dedicate my life. I'm standing up for freedom for my babies and my wife. That's the Tea Party. Only solution, our only foundation should be our constitution. Fiscally responsible, that's a tea party. Promotes free market, yes, that's a tea party. Liberty of government's the only solution, our only foundation should be our constitution. Politicians and their lies, Washington is blemished. Career politicians, careers will be finished. Voting for our freedoms in 2010. Trust me, we're booting out Republic and Telling us to flex the tea party muscle. We're coming together like cards when you shuffle. Actually, forming 5013 C's. Every state in the union is drinking the tea Overconfident, they really thought they already won Now we're bringing out the workers and we're reaching the young So what's a tea party? Well, that's a good question I wrote this song so they all can quit guessing We are the people, American blood We won't let a name be drugged through the mud We fly the flag high, let not the movement die Won't grow weary and we won't be shy Fiscally responsible, that's a tea party Promotes free market, yes, that's a tea party Liberty of government's the only solution Our only foundation should be our constitution Fiscally responsible, that's a tea party Promotes free market, yes, that's a tea party Liberty of government's the only solution Our only foundation should be our constitution
want to thank you again. This is my new album, Politic, Learning History, Defending Freedom. I want to thank you all again. If you want to see a video of this new song, visit the uh, shot on this tour. Visit youtube.com slash right network. I want to thank you. Please continue doing what you're doing because there's more people out there that were just like I was last summer that didn't have a clue. Our values were the same, but the lies were in the brain. They didn't, we didn't, I didn't get it. Now I do. God bless the Tea Party movement. Let's do it up for as you know, everything we do is streamed live at TeaPartyExpress.tv. Is he your new favorite rapper or what? I saw somebody with a little wave sign. No, politics, all right? All right, uh, we're going to be raffling off a politics CD, so would that be your first rap album you really like here? Awesome, so, so go ahead and grab it. Oh, hey, I have never seen this many hippies in my life over there. And I'm from California. California, so I don't know what the deal is that. Go ahead and grab one. Grab one there. Hey, uh, the turnout here has been great. You guys are about ready to run me out of cards. I know exactly how many cards I got, so please fill one out. We're raffling away some more stuff. My folks are coming through. If you've already filled one out, give them the thumbs up. And uh, yeah, be nice to them because they're helpers. Here. All right. If your name is Todd Pratt, come on up. You just want a politics CD. Todd Pratt, come on down. Still got my volunteers going through the audience. Girls, hold up the things that we're walking through. Find them, grab one, and fill out cards. We want to get an accurate count to show Washington, D.C. how powerful we really are. Right now, I'd like to have, I have the pleasure of introducing a gentleman from Nevada. This guy started the Western Pack. A great speaker, a motivator, a heck of a guy. I've learned to love him on this. Tour. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Stockton. Justin, Justin Stockton. Wow! This is amazing. I've been traveling with the tour. I'm not a political operative, but I can tell you the American spirit is alive and well. Shout out your police officers, officers, Boston's finest, have put on an amazing defense, and I can't think of them enough. Thank you so much. You a big round of applause. I started the Western Representation Pack because as a native Nevadan, I am ashamed that Harry Reid represents my great state of Nevada. And as I travel across this country, I know that America is embarrassed by Harry Reid's leadership. When I looked into the faces of my two beautiful young daughters, I knew I had to do something. So I launched a website, the campaign against Harry Reid on Facebook and defeat Reid 2010 should I stop there? So now I've got sites campaigning against Barbara Don't Call Me Ma'am Boxer in California, Nancy Botox Pelosi in San Francisco, your very own Bonnie Flank in Massachusetts. something, folks. Each and every one of us has to stand for something. And again and again and again, when I look at the problems facing our great nation, I go back to the same place for the solution, and it's the United States Constitution. That document forged the greatest nation
nation in the history of man, and I'm not going to let anyone take it away from me. But there's a problem, folks. While we have some good teachers, our public education system is turning out Obama drones who don't understand the blood, the sweat, the sacrifice of American heroes throughout our history who pass that on to us. So we all have to do something about it. And I've been very much blessed to meet a great patriot on this tour who's doing great work educating people about the Constitution. His name is Mike Holler. He wrote the Constitution Made Easy. And I'm so appreciative that he's spreading the message. I bought it for my friends, co-workers, and neighbors. And I encourage you to do the same thing.